So the ones that will usually give you the lowest tax are listed last. They include married filing separately, single, head of household, married filing jointly, and qualifying surviving spouse. So they tried to list them from the least favorable status to the most favorable status for taxes, at least. Obviously, a qualifying surviving spouse is not a happy situation in life, but it could be beneficial with regards to uh, the taxes. Now, in reality, it doesn't always go in this order. You can imagine situations, for example, where filing head of household would be more favorable than uh, married filing jointly. So this is just a general rule going from left to right. In practice, when we're thinking about filing statuses, we can kind of break them out to the potential statuses if we're unmarried versus the statuses if we are married. So if we are unmarried, then typically we have uh, the single filing status or the head of household filing status. The head of household filing status uh, typically needs some kind of dependent in order for us to step up to the head of household from single. Single is basically like kind of like the worst filing status. And then if you're married, then you have the choice between married filing jointly, which is the typical filing status, and married filing separately. Now, the reason they put married filing separate over here as less favorable than single, I believe, is that when you file, when you're married, you can't really jump back to single. You can't say, well, I'm married, but I should have the choice now to file as a joint person or as a separate person and have all the same kind of statuses as I did with single. Uh, that's not really how it works because if you, they let you do that, then you can try to game the system with credits and whatnot by kind of shifting your income between the two